Hello friends and welcome to my channel if you're new or welcome back if you're back. If you are new, my name is Rabbit and my pronouns are they them. Today's video is kind of a little compilation vlog just sort of welcoming in autumn. This is probably going to be the first in a series of very many but because there's been so many things that I've been doing already and so many that I'm planning to do, I just wanted to split it up so I could get it out to you guys in a timely manner. Um, this vlog is pretty cozy, involves soup and marshmallows, camping, being under the stars, visiting my childhood cat, stuff like that. So if that's your vibe and you would like to come along on this little adventure with me, then please keep on watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Hello friends! I am coming to you so excited because I'm about to go to work but it is the first freaking rainy day of the season officially. I think it's August 27th so not quite September yet, not quite Halloween but I literally perfect. I I don't know if that caught on camera but there was lightning just now. I don't know if you can hear it. It's incredible. Thunder is happening so I figured to celebrate. Yes thunder! Yes lightning! Oh my god, okay, so to celebrate, I wore my chipmunk perfume today because it makes me feel the most like autumn since it reminds me of like crunching leaves and nuts and all these like delicious wonderful things. I wore spooky pins on my collar. This one is a spooky cat riding a witch's broom from IBC Draws and this one I got from work and it's a little ghost cat. I'm wearing also spooky earrings but that's like an everyday thing for me so not really special there. And the special thing that I chose to celebrate today with my favorite sweater! It's finally time to come out because officially it's raining. It is almost September. I figure it might be like a couple days early in some people's opinion, but not in mine. The spooky season has officially started and I am so happy. So hopefully it can start for you guys soon too or by the time you're watching this, it's probably already started. Hopefully you're celebrating like wild and having the best times of your lives. I don't know if you're like me and fall just makes you feel incredible, but I am just so energized. I'm going to work very soon, but I just ooh, can't wait to just be inside with the rain, with the kitties, at my job, because I work at a cat cafe and it's just gonna be perfect and it's gonna be a good day, I can tell. Okay, so have a good one. I'll catch you in the next clip. Okay, bye! So I've just gotten off work and to end my perfect, cozy, rainy day, I'm making some soup. Very excited, as this is one of my favorite soups and it just feels really special to make when the rain has finally come. The soup is ready. It's in the necessary spooky mugs on the necessary spooky plates with some toast for dipping and I'm gonna consult Cage. These are the options for tonight. Very excited. Hopefully it rains again so we can maybe open the window a little bit and listen to the rain while we watch our movie. Have a good night. As the autumn begins, one of my favorite places to go is to my mom's house. She and my dad live in this wonderful cottage far out of the city, and driving there feels really special because there's hay bales, cows, the spanning sky. It's not quite yet autumn, but you can see when you look around, things beginning to wane, the season beginning to creep in, the changes starting, and it just makes me so happy parents grow mushrooms and that's always a really special thing to see all their mushroom logs and one of my favorite guys to visit when I'm here is Braveheart. He's my childhood cat. He was born in 2005 so he's quite an old man now but he's just such a special orange guy and he just loves to lounge in the sun and I always love to visit him and get to give him lots of scritches and say hello. One of Cage's favorite things to do when we visit my mom's house is to take this little canoe ride kind of on this lake that's nearby. It's super wonderful and there's always dragonflies buzzing around. The water is super clear and pretty shallow so you can see all these wonderful plants growing underneath and it just feels very spooky, very cool to see the sun setting and the day coming to an end as the season is coming to an end. That was a really special little day trip that Cage and I took to my mom's house. I hope that by the next time we go down there, more leaves have changed colors and the grass is even more golden and the mushrooms are beginning to sprout because the rain has finally come. I'm really looking forward 
to that season and I know that Cage is too because since he's been making all these really wonderful insect art pieces he loves to collect dried flowers that are kind of pre-dried by nature and one of our favorite places to go foraging is around my mom's house and in the forest that's close by so I look forward to seeing that forest in its full autumnal glory. Good morning it is like 7 a.m. a little past 7. We were supposed to wake up really early. We woke up pretty early. We just went to hop to the bakery. We baked some croissants this morning. I got all our stuff packed in the cooler. Just gonna skedaddle everything into the car. Got our coffee brewed. Stop at the bakery and then we'll be on our way. I'm very excited for this cute little road trip and to take you guys along with me. So the next significant portion of this video will be about Cage and I's very spooky and exciting camping trip out just in BC. We decided to just drive out for one night of camping in the car. Every autumn I make a big wish list because it is my favorite season and I always have so many things that I would like to do. So I make a big list of all the activities that I want and some of the ones that I was hoping to achieve on this trip were roasting marshmallows, being able to stargaze, and having a bonfire, leaving some spooky items in some geocaches along the way, having a picnic in the cemetery like the Victorians did, and stopping at some cool thrifty vintage stores on the way. So we managed to do all of those. The only two things we didn't manage to do were grabbing some apples at a farmer's market. We went during the week because that's when we have the days off. So unfortunately farmer's markets were closed and we wanted to forage, but we went to national parks and it is illegal there. So we did not do any foraging, of course. However, the drive over was just super special and all of the things we did were really wonderful. Okay, so we have filled up on our coffee, got some breakfast in us, and now we are going to walk to a geocache and try to find it before the thrift store opens. It opens at 10.30, so we've got some time, and then hopefully we'll work up enough of an appetite that by the time we go to the cemetery, we can have a nice picnic there. So hopefully it's a lot of fun, and on to the geocache. I hope we find it. First geocache of the day, Cage managed to find it. It's super small, so I don't think we'll be able to leave any of our treasures, but it has a really cute Hello Kitty sticker. So we're gonna sign it, put it back where we found it, and we still have 15 more minutes to kill. So wish us luck. So as we were in Canmore, we decided to check out this little museum that was really close by. It was a sort of mining museum, very, very small, but super cool. Cage is really into natural science museums and stuff like that, and they did have a couple of rocks, which he thought was pretty cool. My favorite section, as always, is the kind of weird vintage medical equipment. I just find it kind of spooky and interesting. Okay, so we just finished up at the museum. We're gonna go into this really cute vintage store. It's called Hello Vintage. It looks so freaking cute. There's like really fun skeleton and my favorite part, as always, was the Halloween costumes, but they had also a big selection of 60s dresses, 80s prom dresses, um, tons of just super interesting vintage stuff, 50s sort of picnic, lovely summer outfits, tons of wigs, tons of old toys, just a really, really interesting selection of stuff. I don't think Cage and I bought anything at this one, but Nonetheless, it was just really interesting to see it and get to explore. As always, I adore touching the textures and feeling all the different fabrics and looking at all the colors and imagining the stories of the people that might have worn them, all the different people over the years. That's one of my favorite things about secondhand fashion and is one of the really big reasons that I adore the fact that my closet is like 90% thrifted and or DIY'd. Though I usually prefer less curated thrift stores than this for my actual purchasing of thrifted clothes since these tend to be kind of out of my price range, I just enjoy going to them for novelty's sake, if that makes sense. So we drove up to the cemetery and unfortunately it was closed. No problem, we will hit it on the way back. Um, in the meantime, to kill some time, we're trying to find a geocache. I think we're gonna cross like some really big bridge pretty soon here, so I'll get to show you guys that. Hopefully you can hear all the little bird sounds and stuff, all the little um, chipmunks and things that you can hear. Uh, unfortunately, the leaves haven't started changing yet, it doesn't look like but I, I feel that we are close. We are close and hopefully the next road trip we take out here, the leaves will be autumnal for us to see. Okay, on to the geocache, hopefully you find it. So we found this lovely trail to walk along to find this geocache and it was just wonderful to soak up the last summer rays of the sun. One thing that I do forget is that the autumn leads to the winter which can get so chilly, so it does feel really good to be able to appreciate 
those warm rays while they can still last and see the running rivers and know that it's going to be so much more peaceful soon and so much more orange and yellow. We did end up finding the geocache, which was very exciting, and to my delight, it was a kind of larger sized one, so we were able to leave our spooky items. I always bring little plastic bats and bones to leave in the geocaches. Um, it just feels very appropriate for October coming up and for the fact that I am trying to make everything as spooky as possible. This little green skater guy is the prize, I guess, <laughs> we took from the geocache in exchange for one of the bones. We walked quite a bit off the path until we had passed the boundary of the provincial park and we're in an area where we could look at the flowers, see if there was anything to forage, which we didn't quite find, but Cage could also try to fly his drone, which was very, very cool. While I explored the landscape and looked around to see if I could find any signs of autumn. It was incredibly special. While the fall is my favorite season, it felt important to appreciate the last little bits of summer as I know that the time is almost over. The anticipation is real and I can't wait. Exciting news, my friends. Could it be the first colors of autumn? It might be. It might just be that this tree's dying. But regardless, it's orange. Amongst the sea of green, a tiny spot of Halloween cheer shines through. Look at that. Autumn leaves. It's our third try going to a cemetery and we finally found one that was open. So hopefully we can have a really nice, relaxing little picnic in here. It looks really empty, but I don't see any gravestones. So we'll see what the deal is. So we got here and there's this amazing like little alleyway or something. This little bench, but basically you can walk these little cobblestones, all the moss growing in between it. And it's just the most enchanted little spot. The view from here is very nice through the trees. So when we got there, the cemetery was empty, but soon the maintenance kind of worker came by and I am very anxious and also very picky about my cemetery. So we decided to just move on from this one and find a next one. So it was back on the road and off to another. On our drive to the next cemetery, we stopped at the Spiral Mountains sort of exhibit on the side of the road. It was really beautiful just seeing the completely sprawling pieces of nature and I always love the little dioramas they make, so that was cool to see. The cemetery we did end up finding was completely magical and I am so happy that I was picky and decided to wait for the perfect one. It was off this tiny little road with this big wrought iron fence. It was completely empty and it was just basically a big square on the top of a hill up a dirt road. It was very, very small and overgrown with so many beautiful pieces of plant life, but with still enough of a path and even boardwalks that you were able to traverse it quite comfortably without stepping on any graves, of course. Most of the gravestones were clustered together, but there was one in the far, far back corner, which was just alone. As we walked by, we said hello to everyone, seeing the nature, seeing all the tombstones. There wasn't anyone that had been buried here recently, so you could feel the energy. Very thick and heavy in this place, but incredibly beautiful. Once we did one loop around the cemetery and tried to say hello and introduce ourselves, we set out the picnic blanket and sat down to finally have our incredible delicious picnic. We had stopped at our local bakery on our drive over, so we still had these buns as well as the croissants that I had baked this morning. Yesterday, Kate bought us a bunch of fruit and cheeses because we've been really into making our own vegan charcuterie boards. It was really, really wonderful, and I enjoyed very much having a quiet conversation in the rustling trees with all the cool wind and our very quaint little picnic. So basically that was perfect. That was my absolute dream, finally fulfilled. <laughs> um, this is the perfect cemetery. I'm so glad we waited because first one, yeah, it was closed. Second one, also busy. Third one had a guy and also was just like not that much of a vibe. And then this one is just like the perfect 
spooky, vintage, tucked away, we're the only ones here. It's in the middle of a forest. It's a good thing about small towns is like, small cemeteries that are perfect and old and I love it, so. When we were finished with the cemetery, our next stop was to drive out and go to Emerald Lake. Ever since, Cage and I went to Kelowna pretty recently and drove by just the clearest, most turquoise blue water. Cage has just been enamored with that kind of thing and been wanting to check out Emerald Lake because of everything we've heard about it and its name and stuff. There were lots of crows around and that was really special. I love to see my corvid friends around. I used to have quite close relationships with them back in university and I definitely miss my crow friends a lot. We walked around the boardwalk. There was canoe rentals but they were closing when we got there so didn't manage to do that. Cajun had been wanting to go swimming and I had done some research before and told him there's no way we're gonna be able to go swimming. It's like negative 40 in there and it wasn't like a really hot day when we went. Uh, but he's like, no, no, we'll go swimming, we'll go swimming. Anyway, we ended up dipping our feet, and it felt really refreshing and good. There's something so cleansing about the water, and it just felt so special to be surrounded by a giant expanse of it, as well as being able to be in it. We found spider friends, and even more signs of autumn, with the berries, the leaves, everything was just completely perfect. I know that the season is not quite here, but I can feel it in the air and it just makes me smile every time I think about it. Near Emerald Lake there was this natural bridge that we went to go see. That was pretty fun. There were people um, going where you definitely are not supposed to go, trying to cross it and stuff, which was pretty sketchy. The rushing water was incredibly powerful and majestic and just reminded me of the magnitude of nature, which is always a good thing to remember, especially as the season changes. Hey friends, uh, so we just got to our campsite. Super, super excited. We're like the only ones here, or we were, and we had picked a campsite, and it was number 13, perfect. Unlucky 13, my favorite. Um, and then when we got here, there was like a guy and parked like two stalls next to us, and it's in a completely empty campground. It's like that meme of that urinal where like the one guy goes to pee and the guy goes right next to him. Anyway, um, so we are set up going to load the car, get it all super cute, and then have our nice fire, and it's just super exciting. I can't wait. I think it's going to be super, super cute, and um, yeah, wonderful spooky night in, in the car, camping out. So, chat with soon. We ended up deciding to just remove the car and repark it, even though we had already filled out the form. We just wrote a note explaining that we decided to move. Anyway, the spot that we chose made it feel like we were the only ones in the entire campground, except for a couple of crows, which was just so special. Our first order of business was to get the car set up for camping, and I just love so much being able to make cozy little nests, basically, whether to sleep in, to read a book in and curl up in, whether it's in the bedroom or in the car or on the living room floor. There's just something that feels like you're making a blanket for it, no matter where you're making it, if you're fluffing up a lot of pillows and blankets. We are all set up for the night. We've got fairy lights the cage very sweetly put up last night. We just hung some like scrap fabric and an old scarf up to like make it a little more cozy. Can't wait to snuggle up in here and read to each other. And I've brought my beloved Tales of Edgar Allan Poe for some spooky reading. Very excited for that. I'm a bit scared. Once our sleeping area was set up it was time to get the firewood, which was a lot more challenging than either of us expected, but we did eventually figure it out. Can I show you? Yeah. Okay. That's hard. It's very hard. We are starting the night by making a teeny tiny fire so we can boil a little bit of water for our cider. And the sun is setting over the mountains. We're packed in for the night. We've got our hot apple ciders and have dressed in our cozy warm sweats. Had the first marshmallow of the night, it was delicious. But now we're just gonna try to take a quick walk before the sun sets and we just settle in officially for the night. We're on our walk in the spooky woods and there's all these little flowers. They remind me of like ghost fairies dancing or something. Walking together was really special and there was just an incredible variety of different lichens and mosses which just reminded me of being back home. Being next to the running river was very soothing and there's something about the very rough water. It felt really special to sit there in some moments of quiet meditation together. Once we had 
sat long enough, it was time to explore and just appreciate the nature around us before it began to turn from green to all the other colors it would soon become. By the time we got back to the campsite, the sun was setting and it was time to get the big fire started. We wanted to make ourselves some vegan hot dogs for dinner, so we got those started. It felt really nice to just sit together and be able to cuddle by the fire. There's something so special to me about bonfires. I think a lot of people feel that way, being around the bonfire when the sun sets. I know a lot of people don't like the smell of smoke, but bonfire smoke is one of my favorite smells, and the fact that my favorite sweater will be smelling like it for a couple days or weeks <laughs> once I get home just makes me very, very happy. We dressed our hot dogs with lettuce from my mom's garden and some tomatoes also from her garden in these spooky containers that felt very festive for the occasion. And then I did something that I haven't done in so long but brings me so much joy and that is pull out my hula hoop. I had honestly not forgotten but definitely neglected um, to remind myself how happy it made me to just be spinning and especially like at nighttime under the stars it was just absolutely incredible in front of the fire when the fire was just dying down to embers we roasted vegan marshmallows together i don't really like graham crackers so we didn't make s'mores but we just ate toasted marshmallows my favorite thing to do is to kind of toast the outside layer and then peel the shell of the marshmallow off and then toast the inside layer and do that over and over so you just get these like crunchy gooey shells of marshmallow it makes me so happy and i just oh there's something so nostalgic they're one of my absolute favorite sweets we didn't put the fire out until we were finished our stargazing though and it felt really special to be able to sit under this incredibly bright blanket of stars with cage we could see that we were in the Milky Way. Well, you could barely make out the constellations because there were so many stars that were just so incredibly bright. And I think we might have seen some actual shooting stars as well. So it just felt completely magical and special to sit under the stars and chat together. Then we extinguished the fire for the night with a bunch of water and crawled into our cozy nest of the car. It was perfect and warm together. I adore car camping. When we woke up, it was the most incredible foggy morning, and it just felt like the crispest autumn air. I was overjoyed. We woke up as the sun was setting over the massive mountains, and as we stepped outside, all of the morning dew was like glistening, completely beautiful, almost like the stars from last night were in the grass. All of the dew once it started to warm up, began evaporating and it was just rolling off of the grass, off of the little structures that were around us, and it just felt like being in the most magical autumnal fairy tale. Being completely alone in that campsite was so spooky and so perfect. It was pretty chilly because of the overnight rain, which we got to listen to in the car. In order to warm up, we decided to make some coffee. I brought my favorite coffee maker that feels very nostalgic from home because um, my parents are Italian and this is like the espresso maker style that I grew up with. So we got a fresh espresso ground and in there and then started up the tiny kettle. We also warmed up oat milk over the fire in a little cup. For breakfast, we had these pumpkin granolas. Eventually, it was time to skedaddle, so we packed up all our belongings, said thank you to the campground, and we're back on our way to the next adventure. <laughs> Hello, so we are on the way home. Just stopped at our first stop in Banff. Gonna do a couple of things here. I think we're gonna visit like a gem store, the vintage shop, really excited for that. So hopefully can take you guys along there and we'll see how it goes. No spooky season is complete, of course, without candy. So we had to stop in at the Banff candy store while we were there, um, seeing their selection of salt water toffee. I saw caramel apple, apple pie, and caramel corn, which just felt like autumn giving a little nod to me. They also had a bunch of chocolate that was dairy-free and our favorite types of honey sticks that Cage and I just adore to put in tea. Cage loves Reese's and they had a whole Reese's section of all specialty types of Reese's homemade fudge section, which I wish I could have tried, but I'm vegan, so alas. We purchased a Pez of E.T., some autumnal colored honey sticks for our teas, and a bunny comb chocolate, which was delicious. Caramel, incredible, that one was my favorite. 
The strawberry one was pretty good, but tasted mostly like strawberry. And the white one was, well, I don't really like white chocolate in case you thought it was pretty sweet. I haven't tried this one yet, but I'm very excited. And then we went to the Rock and Gem store. They had a rid ridiculously huge selection. Labradorite is one of my favorite crystals, and it felt really special to be surrounded by so much of it. Just in general, when I go to crystal stores, being in the presence of so many rocks feels really, really calming and really cool. Just feels like a treasure cave or something. And I went home with this little piece of Labradorite. Labradorite's one of my favorite stones because it has these wonderful flashes and it always reminds me of the moon or the sea or something. While we were in Banff, it was important for us to visit the other really, really cool vintage store. This was called Last Temptation Vintage. They had all these spooky little blobkin guys, vintage hand puppets, a whole selection of trolls, and just every single type of fun costume and dress and wig and accessory that you could ever desire. Their mannequins had animal heads, which I thought was just super delightful, and we were able to find three little selves, which is one of my new favorite things to collect. I also found this kind of strange troll doll, because Cage and I collect trolls, so he's another one for our collection of sort of weirdos. He's posable, which is fun. And we found a pair of red suspenders for Cage's Halloween costume with me. And we also found this incredibly gorgeous autumnal colored flannel. While we were in Banff, we were able to visit the cemetery that had been closed the day before for cleaning. And it was magical. We had another picnic because we had some leftovers from the one the day before. And it felt so special to be surrounded by the mossy stones, all of the historic gravestones. This is one of the older cemeteries in Banff. Um, they're not taking any new souls here, and I think they have around 2,000 people buried. I think this cemetery was the one that had the most crow friends. That was really, really special to see. The moss here was incredible, and there were lots of very beautiful structures. The weather just felt warm with a crisp breeze, and I felt like I could just tell that this is one of the final days of the summer. I adore the older headstones the most. I find the fact that they're filled with so much history so special. So on our next stop was this other cemetery, the one that was also closed the first day that we had tried to visit. One of my favorite parts about this one is this historic section in the back. Pretty much all the graves are surrounded by some sort of protective barrier and the path is made of mulch. It smells like juniper berries and cedar trees, and the atmosphere is so peaceful. The gates around the graves are all different. Some are pointed, some have more square tops, some are even metal. You can tell how old they are from the lichens and mosses growing over them. Despite that, they still receive fresh flowers, and it's really beautiful to see. Then it was time to say our goodbyes to everyone and hit the road again. The next stop was for a geocache. Friends, we are at geocache number three, number one of day two, number three of this total trip. I think it's, uh, what, 55 meters away? Hopefully we find it soon. So we have located the cache. It was not very hidden. We're like not really sure if this is it, but it says it was in an ammo can, so we're thinking that's that. <laughs> Success, we found another cache. Okay. So, oh, this is the travel guy. That's a travel bug, probably. Yeah, we'll leave him. So we'll leave the travel bug. We'll just sign off and leave a, a fun friend. Oh, he's also a travel bug. Okay, so this is a travel bug cache. Basically, you're going to want to take these and travel them around. Some of them have destinations they're trying to go. Some of them you can just bring them wherever. Some of them are in a race. Basically, super cool. We're not going to take any of the... Uh, <laughs> these Star Wars. We're not going to take any of the travel bugs, but we will leave some bats and see what's what. He's fun. Oh, is he in there? Yeah. Oh, we're taking him for sure. Then it was back on the road again. We weren't quite ready to be back home, so we made another stop to this abandoned gas station. 
This place, I haven't been here since I filmed a very crappy student film. It's very cool, abandoned, spooky location that always has this changing art because it's on the side of the highway and not a provincial park or anything like that. Cage was able to fly his drone, which he just had so much fun with. While he explored, I was able to appreciate the changing flowers, look at the butterflies and the different wildlife that was around. It felt really good to be out in the mountains. I kind of love dilapidated buildings. There's something that feels very spooky about them and being the only ones there was really, really special. Once I got bored of exploring, I decided to pull out my hula hoop for probably one last summertime flow. It was really, really fun. It's kind of hard to do in the winter since um, I'm scared of knocking things over in my house and I am sometimes a little bit embarrassed to do it in like a public park or something. So just being able to be in this abandoned building and be with my hula hoop again was super, super fun. It feels very nostalgic for me. Again, I think next time we go camping, I am hoping to bring um, a speaker so it will be like a little bit more natural feeling. It's funny, I guess I've never shared with you guys that this is a hobby of mine, but I used to be super, super into it because I had a very, very big circus phase. I just think flow arts are so beautiful. Had a lot of friends that were doing stuff with fire and staffs and poi and stuff like that. I haven't learned any new moves since I was 16 and I'm like quite rusty, but still super, super fun. Plus, uh, Cage got to practice with his drone, so that was, I guess, kind of fun for the both of us. We hung out there for about an hour, enjoying the last day of our little two-day vacation, saying goodbye to the mountains and the trees, and thank you for everything, so it was really special. Once we got home, it was time to add our little geocache treasures to the jar where we keep all our previous geocache treasures. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed following me on this trip. I had absolutely an incredible time and I hope that maybe it brought you some inspiration for things that you would like to do for fall. I'm hoping to make quite a few more vlog sort of videos of Cage and I's fall adventures as we have a lot of things planned on the bucket list. I know sometimes these videos don't do super well, but I enjoy making them. Either way, I appreciate you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.